A lot can be said about how particular social and political movements have been taken over by subversive forces that are focused on the total disruption and destruction of all institutions and organizations of a nation's core. Welcome to Four Seas, One Family. Welcome to Four Seas, One Family, where we share thoughts and opinions concerning life in Taiwan, the region, and the world. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan, and I'm so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey, and welcome to the show. Recent disturbances in democratic nations have been allowed to spread out of control, much like a preventable virus. Ideological differences that are solely focused on gaining total control of people's minds and free will to later refocus in a direction that would lead them to complete isolation, despotism, self-neglect, and in the end, total and mutual destruction. Carefully crafted dialogues and misinterpretations have focused public opinions and individual minds on primal needs and selective, primarily selfish motives. This set up an environment that made people more susceptible to total, total external controls. Now, there isn't just one particular group or organization afflicted with this type of infiltration. The truth is, groups, organizations, institutions, and, and others in democratic nations have been to some degree infiltrated by subversive elements that are hell-bent on obtaining total control of their cultural, financial, social, and in some cases, spiritual direction. The point I want to make is that nearly all large-scale and influential social, political organizations in nations that allow differing opinions, like the United States, have remnants of being, how would you say, opinion-driven or remotely controlled by foreign governments or entities through both alternative and traditional media. Now, in an earlier episode, I referred to how America is currently going through its own social and cultural revolution. Erosions are apparent in events that are taking place in other democratic nations as well. And it looks like today that many more revolutions are on the horizon. After taking a more critical observation, it becomes easy to see that most of the techniques used to subvert many democratic nations today are simply blueprints taken from earlier so-called revolutionary movements. The steps that had the most effect on those influenced by revolutionary movements have been updated to fit in with the current strife people today feel subjugated to. This method was determined to be the best way to influence and motivate people to the point of causing disturbances that could later become a liability to their own cultural, social political movements and spiritual survival. The goal is to create a point of view that makes specific laws, mandates, regulation, no matter how serious or benign they may appear to be, to be put in place by authoritarian leadership or government, allowing subversive entities to create obstacles to be set in places complication and often fabricates evidence that is supposed to prove that people in powerful positions are the ones who are denying segments of a population their deserved rights, which becomes more explosive than lighting dynamite on a hillside. Now, before you jump to conclusions, please take a deep breath. Now, this is usually done by exacerbating finances, land, property, anything that's owned by the so-called upper-class population. And at this point, it is pointed out that these members or the members of this population are the ones who are possessing material wealth and have maintained overall control and advantages of their nation. So in other words, the landholders and families of those who acquired large amounts of wealth are presented as the empowered group or members of society that are displacing and preventing other people from obtaining wealth and pursuing their dreams. Now, this sounds much like the echoes in nations worldwide, which even includes some liberal democratic nations. Now, 
hold on, hold your breath. Now, at, at this point, I may sound like I'm some kind of money baron, but I'm s- certainly not because I see how greed has caused citizens of a nation to suffer and denying this would be disingenuous. And a lot of this is simply created through word games that become slogans and later attached to colorful signs that in many cases really do represent the current events taking place in the world today. However, if these events aren't carefully constructed or orchestrated for positive goals, there is a chance that social and political implosion may occur. And this is exactly what happened during the Cultural Revolution in China between 1966 and 1976. Now, let me make some distinctions here. There are concerns in democratic nations that must seriously be dealt with to ensure protected rights. This includes giving equal rights to citizens of a nation without the fear of being neglected or subjugated to unfair, inhumane treatment or law enforcement. Segments of a population shouldn't be denied opportunities and rights because of the particular way they look, language they use, food consumed, political affiliation, religion, or even sexual orientation. But there's a catch. Those who are fighting to protect their democratic rights must also be willing to share their privileges with those different from themselves and ensure that they are also provided with the same equal rights. And this is honestly hard for some people to do or admit that they themselves are not doing. Now, what I'm saying is, as long as the belief system isn't designed to destroy a nation's existence, the will to protect the rights of those who don't hold your same exact beliefs is needed because it is the glue that keeps a nation together. Cross-cultural counseling or bickering does nothing to solve differences. Now, in a previous episode, I also hinted how the former Soviet Union formulated and propagated subversive activities globally by using what they called useful idiots to excite diametrically opposed groups within a nation. And in today's socially and politically connected environment, the term useful idiot can also make references to shills and opportunists. These helping hands promote the narratives of their caretakers or minders to prove that they are subservient to their handlers' needs which frankly makes them complacent. The methods used by the former Soviet Union propaganda departments, in particular their Committee for State Security, better known as the KGB, made it easier for organizations like theirs to quickly encapsulate counter ideologies within the minds of unsuspecting propaganda carriers, better known as useful idiots, who, well, had personal, social, or financial reasons for propagating subversive doctrines and ideologies within their own nation sometimes, not only abroad. But however, keep in mind that nations that usually employ aggressive subversive tactics do not possess the hardcore financial or military power to implement their goals, which makes subversive tactics much more attractive to them for good reasons. And maybe because of globalization, it has become a lot easier today to deeply embed destructive ideologies in diverse nations that offer their citizens equal treatments and rights, along with the ability to question and even replace their leaders at the drop of a hat. It is just too easy to find separations in societies that could be targeted for subversion because all that is needed is the ability to uncover fractures that have developed within a nation's cultural political core. The next step would be to find or create ways to exacerbate disturbances between or within groups or camps to cause a destructive chain reaction, which is much like playing chess. For example, during the Cultural Revolution, Mao Zedong referred to two opposing camps to set in his foothold within the government and control. It was called, one was called the Red Camp and the other was called the Black Camp. Now, the Red Camp was mainly enthusiastic young people who were extremely poor and were deemed with the responsibility for resetting cultural and social norms. 
And at the same time, the black camp was referred to as those who maintained their privileged positions only because of their vast financial wealth or possessions. Hence, in this scenario, they were the ones required resetting, which simply meant punished or simply persecuted. The methods that were often used to reset members of the black camp were usually quite brutal. Now, I would like you to take a moment and think. Just take a little moment here. I would like each and every one of you to take the time and think about what particular camp you may be presumed to belong to. And if one day your particular camp may become the enemy of another, which may lead to more than just the standoff. Now, once again, before you jump to conclusions, please take another breath. Today we have definitions, ideologies, pronoun usages, dun dun, that didn't exist even 10 years ago. We still also have some racial barriers to take down, and the best we can do as free-thinking, open societies is to correct and improve ourselves, while at the same time learning from our past, and with the goal to not repeat the same mistakes. Now, it is, it is so wonderful that people with different ideologies, backgrounds, and beliefs are allowed to learn and live together to create a cohesive, peaceful existence. If diverse cultures are unable to mitigate their disagreements or understandings, they will become susceptible to external interference that will certainly result in mutual destruction. Now, my goal is to get people of diverse communities to stay cognitive to how delicate their situation is. And regardless of your social, political, sexual orientation, or religious beliefs, if you are a citizen of a democratic nation and are unable to mitigate your misunderstandings just for your nation's benefit, you will be the ones responsible for allowing your nation, your country to be subverted and taken apart. Internal and internal cross-cultural bickering does nothing to solve problems, but it does allow the destruction of all institutions and foundations that were put in place to protect your freedoms. If you found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe to help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan, and remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.